School is an 18-year forced government training program that sterilizes the potential for brilliance in children, those who actually survive schooling and survive conformity and continue on to think for themselves, truly are a rare breed. All children start out as curious, highly experimental minds, and then one day they're sent to school. Mandatory schooling has never consisted of anything but the memorization of monotonous dead facts and training children to master repetitious behavior. For the greater part of their day, everything the child says must match the interest of their school teachers. Their behavior must coincide with a set policy and a set regulation. They cannot use the bathrooms without permission. If they wish to speak, they must raise their hands. And after every hour or so, a bell rings and everyone must move to it. It couldn't be any more slave-like. And this type of training becomes a ritual for the child. It becomes the plot background for their television shows and books or the ideology taught to them by a teacher or a parent. An entire monoculture is being developed here, stripping children of their power to cause trouble for the state at an early age, training them to be good servants of the politically correct. Their environment is much like a prison by the population lacking any ability to check the authority of the warden. The process becomes a matter of rubber stamping. They have no control over their entire lives, which is directly related to youth violence because the only control they have is between each other. Mandatory schooling produces children who are either terrified of the tyranny of others or have been raised to perpetually exploit the conditions of others. It's just like the prison system, forced cohabitation. The child's presence in certain buildings and their engagement in state-regulated behavior is under penalty of imprisonment. An entire army of truancy officers have been hired to make sure that no child is on the other side of the bars. At the end of 18 years of coercive state authority, the child is released into the world. It's like the end of an 18-year prison sentence. Now that you're trained to do as you're told, now you can be free. And the produce of these schools, or this state-controlled manufacturing operation, is a society willing to submit, to obey, and to listen. Forced behavior, which technically amounts to a type of slavery, will only inculcate a mindset of fear and terror. You need to be somewhere at a set time, either at the orders of an authority or a bell. Everyone in one mass shifts to another position or another place to engage in a new activity. They're trained to not only follow instruction, but they're also trained to follow a certain behavior. Rules, regulations, and laws are set for the children. They say you cannot do this to others. You can do this to others. This is acceptable. This is not acceptable. Standards of culture, morality, and behavior are imprinted into these new young minds that are in the blossoming stages of development. Their minds are being intercepted by the state and molded to conform to state standards. The first lesson they teach you is the orders of authority. The second lesson is to work with each other to achieve the desired ends of those in control. If a group of children are taught to engage in the same behavior regardless of what they want to do, then they will never fight back as adults. And this is your group of tenants who will live in roaches and never call the health inspector. This is your group of citizens who is easily terrified by police officers into voluntarily giving up their rights. This is your group of workers who surrender their lives to the corporation who tells them how to dress, how to speak, what time to wake up, which means they essentially tell you what time to go to sleep if they tell you what time to wake up. This is nothing new. These are the fruits of mandatory schooling. If we look into the roots of 19th century industrialism, the Civil War demonstrated to industrialists and financiers how a standardized population trained to follow orders without significant thought could be made to function as a money tree. It's no surprise that global power and corporate wealth is based on a third-rate educational system that works against developing individuals of true character and true intellect. Because the mindless bureaucrat or the thoughtless worker who will follow a system without question is the pattern that our system depends on. And this is what school produces. The system is not designed to educate the public, which is why federal and state bureaucracies call the shots, not the parents, not the local school boards. Every law is harshly enforced with maximum punishments. The tone of a principal is much like the tone of a warden, with no check on his authority. They will always have a way of using coercive ability to enforce a standard on the population. Strict punishment awaits any kid who disobeys this ruling force. And there is no doubt that an active student body reflects positively on school administrators. It's like factory floor men. They're fulfilling their quotas to the inspecting superintendent of the local school district. This is the reality of government training. The state doesn't care if children are homeless or on the streets or suffering from malnutrition and hunger. But the second the child fails to appear in school at the scheduled time, like a court date, the police are alerted. Until we abolish mandatory schooling, your child will be brought up as a slave so that he can accept becoming a slave later in life in adulthood.